I've been with the Woolen Trust now volunteering for seven years. <coughs> and over those seven years, we've had a lot of training opportunities. Things like dry stone walling, first aid courses, tree identification, mosses and lichens identification courses, river flies, there's all sorts of training opportunities. We've had some basic fire safety training, um, map breeding skills, which obviously come in handy. Uh, if, for example, we're up here and we've not got uh, a phone that's working, battery could have gone anything. The guide at walk training was, was really good. We had to go through a whole process of training for that before we could sort of obviously take people out around the estate, but it kind of equips you with all the stuff you have to know when you're taking a group somewhere. <laughs> There's all sorts of things you can do for um, bird watching, fungi identification, flora and fauna, wildlife. Oh, the list is endless. Well, we had some workshops, um, writing workshops, um, which were very helpful. And then we had workshops with um, design to, to, to show us how to design the book. Um, so we had quite a lot of professional help. Well, we learned how to plant trees without strangling them uh, and getting the, uh, the tree tubes on right way round. Uh, and this sort of thing, when we started planting all these trees. Uh, so we've done butterflies and bees, pollinators. Um, we've done birdsong, uh, we've done uh, mushrooms, uh, fungi identification. Uh, so we, we come out here every year and see what we can see. Uh, we take home big bags full of uh, mushrooms to eat. Um, there's, a, there's a kestrel just following us here, so we've done the birds as well. And woodland working, um, doing things like um, coppicing. Dry stone walling, yeah. Yeah, we've done quite a bit of that. Because um, there's a lot of dry stone walls on the moors up here um, that are in states of disrepair. And what we're trying to do after the training or during the training is sort of rebuild a lot of those walls. I've learned a lot about the history of the area because we're part of the, as I'm part of the Smills Research Group as well, and it's fascinating. And also, what the wildlife there's so much a variated wildlife. I mean, on my litter picking walks, the number of butterflies I come across, I, I never knew they existed. A lot about <laughs> producing a book. <laughs> I didn't realise there was so much to it. You know, sort of an awful lot to publish in a non-fiction book like we were. Producing. We discovered things, having lived here for 42 years, that we didn't know existed. Um, and even the fire exposed, the, the fire on Winter Hill uh, a good few years ago, um, exposed things that we had no idea about. So um, in that respect, you learn all sorts of things about your local environment that you wouldn't know otherwise. So outside of the fire patrol, um, I've learnt to remove the plastic tubing off the trees that have been planted, um, balsam bashing, done a bit of that. So this, this place is on, on my doorstep, right, and I can see it from, from where I live. Uh, so when you get to know a place really well, it, it, you sort of just sort of learn to love it and appreciate it and just want to get out there and every day and, uh, or stay at home and, and do some research about it. So it's, uh, I, I really sort of learned to love it. Uh, my wife calls it her, you know, her safe place, her love place, and, and she will come out and just walk along the roads and pick up the litter, just just to enjoy being here. Because I volunteer still with Berry Rangers and Salford Rangers, they kept a ranger service going, and I still go over there and volunteer with them. I mean, they teach me things, <laughs> but some of the stuff that we've done up here, I take down there. I suppose I recognise more things in my garden than um, the weeds than I did before. And you know, you get birds flying over and you think, oh, that's a whatever it is. As well as being a litter picker in Woodland One, I also work with the forest school, so I've been able to, the, which uses part of the estate. Um, I was there last week, went on a nature walk with them and also as a Chair of Governors of Primary School uh, I've passed on skills to the children there. Being able to feel part of a community and something a lot, you know, um, and not feeling isolated and, you know, because of, of the care and responsibilities, joining in with something that was really worthwhile, yeah. It's such a diverse uh, crowd of people from um, different ages, um, 
different backgrounds, different interests, and uh, but they all seem to meld, and everybody chips in, and uh, and it, it's a really good atmosphere. I've been walking up and down these areas for many many years prior to that, so. Uh, when it came to my attention that they were looking for volunteers, I came aboard. And it's been brilliant because I've been able to also get familiar with more of the routes around here. And as I've become more comfortable with that, then I've been able to bring other people who maybe are not walkers, maybe they like photography or, you know, flora, flora, all the flora and fauna, fauna parts around here um, that they have an interest in. Um, so I can bring them out here with confidence, do a couple of routes with them. Um, and get them out of their comfort zone sometimes and also in terms of people's mental well-being it's just nice to be able to say to them oh i know a spot we can go tony lives just down the road from me but i didn't know him before woodland trust and there's another another lady lives near me that's a member so you see people out doing their thing or different things or just walking and it's just nice to chat and socialise, you know. Well, there was a guide on the mass trespass they did from town and that, that was a fantastic day out that, helping to be, guide people about. I do the guided walks, so we, uh, we'll, we'll talk about you know, the history, which is my speciality on this one, but we will, uh, so we'll, we'll take people along. We do talks um, to uh, local groups, um, history groups um, or uh, other interested groups. I didn't really volunteer a lot, uh, prior to sort of finishing work um, <clears throat> but this summer I volunteered at the Manchester International Festival and I mean that was we had it's really like uh, it's a stiff process actually to get in there because you have to do this online sort of application you have to go through these uh, sort of uh, inductions and things like that uh, but one of the things that I think clinched it was what I'd learnt here and the fact that I was volunteering here. And recently there's been a lot more volunteers coming through. I think there's, there can be 10, 11 people on a Monday um, doing these practical tasks. Um, it's built up from the two or three of us originally. Um, so it's meeting those people as well. You know, sort of like-minded people and having a chat and you have lunch with them and you talk about other things as well. Before co the Covid pandemic, we worked for a time with the special needs children or students actually from Myerscore School College on the estate helping to clear it up, cut down rhododendrons, balsam bashing etc. And I thoroughly enjoyed doing that and the children did as well. Part of the job I took up when I um, retired from sort of my main career was doing expeditions mainly with children and um, I've, I've certainly learning on the guided walk side. That's that sort of helped me on uh, doing a little bit of uh, um, explaining what's going on, doing the speaking, engaging people, and what I've been doing. We were out yesterday doing a um, doing a watercolouring thing uh, experience, uh, helping out with that, and uh, someone who. I didn't know before, who I now know uh, as a uh, retired uh, consultant, uh, was uh, I came past having done a litter pick. So, and I did a, um, I did fire watching with her um, during the uh, during the fire five years ago, um, when we were calling in helicopters to drop thousands of liters of water onto uh, onto fires uh, that were springing up here, there and everywhere. That was devastating. Um, and you just wondered when it was going to end, but it did. I thought it was very well, I thought the fire um, people and, and the people were very, very good. They were so well organised. Um, and we had people out on the moor looking for fires, um, looking for smoke. And even after all the fire, was put out and the fire brigade and the Salvation Army and all these other people um, who helped on the infrastructure of, of managing the fire left. We were still doing fire patrols um, looking for smoke. I remember coming across a piece of ground where the peat had fallen away and there was smoke coming out from underneath the peat about two feet down where it had fallen away. There was still smoke coming out and that was about two months after the fire was out. You know, so that was a quite, yeah, sort of memorable experience, that fire. Yeah, I mean, obviously it, it was horrific really because the speed that it moved and the damage that it did to the wildlife up there, the ground nesting birds and that sort of stuff, you know, 
Um, yeah, it was. It was quite horrendous, really. It did uncover a lot of things, though. The history people, there's a good history group in the, in the Swiddles estate uh, for the Woodland Trust. They do a lot of work. And they've said that the fire, well, I guess it was bad, but it also uncovered a lot of features that they didn't know were there. And when I volunteered, I obviously knew about the 2018 fires because I'm not so far from here and you could see it. You obviously read about it and you see it in the news. So to be on site and learn a bit more about the people and you know the, the certain procedures that were then put in place to help stop that, it's allowed me to learn a bit more about it. It's, it's then allowed me to do this and be a part of a team that helps support this, the, you know, the, to prevent fires long term. Um, there's been other instances as well where there's been barbecues being lit, I'm trying to explain that. And most of the times it's just young, young children um, who obviously do get aggressive, uh, especially if they're in larger groups. Um, but sometimes you're lucky and they'll understand what you're trying to explain to them, why you're there in the first place, and they'll pack up and they'll move on. Well, it's getting out and about, meeting new people. I know that if I go out, and I'm helping and doing something worthwhile. It makes me feel better and uh, I love, love doing it. Definitely good for men my mental health because, you know, when you are caring for somebody who you can't communicate with um, 24 hours a day, it can be quite isolating. So, you know, I, I form new friendships as well with the people in the group and uh, it's something that's really helped me and hopefully I've helped them. Getting out in this lovely countryside, fresh air, fun, um, keeping healthy, meeting new people, learning what they about their interests and what they can impart to you, um, meeting the public because the public see you in a, a Woodland Trust t-shirt or or coat or, or um, high vis jacket or something, and they ask you questions and you think, oh, I know the answer to that, or I'm not sure of the answer to that, and you can go and look it up or find out for them or point them in the right direction and people are interested in their local countryside and it's nice to be able to tell them a little bit extra that they may not know about. It's nice to meet people, meet people, especially people from other, other backgrounds because you tend to get uh, into your own sort of, uh, you tend to mix with your own level of people if you like and people from the same, uh, same jobs and this sort of thing so um, getting out and about uh, and meeting other people is a great benefit I think. I mean I've grown up in Bolton all my life but you don't realise what's on your doorstep so when you come out here and you discover one route but then you go back the week after and you try a different route or you veer off a little bit and you find so many different places and I think from a, a well-being perspective when you, you, it's so easy to get caught up in just your day to day you know, going work, coming home, going work, coming home. Um, so being able to be a part of this and be able to explore these areas around us and then in turn pass that on to others. So being able to say to family members or friends, if they've gone through a bit of a rough week or a rough day, you know, let's go for a walk. It's got me out and it's got me to mix, you know, more. In work, I used to do that all the time. But I was concerned that when I finished work, you know, I might just be like, you know, sitting there, <laughs> just reading the news all the time or something. So it's, it's kept me in touch with people. It's, um, I've got to know a lot more about Smithles and the estate as well. And I also, one of the things that's made a difference is I used to work mostly indoors. I used to be out on site sometimes, but mostly in offices. And I've, I've, I've kind of like got much more used to being outside and being outdoors and appreciating being outdoors as well in all weathers. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's been good. Health wise, it gets you outdoors. Um, which is why I did it in the first place back in 96 to get myself outdoors. I was working full time at the time, of course. Um, I wanted something to do outdoors, you know, to meet people as well. A uh, sense of belonging and a sense of ownership. You know, I mean, when we walk up here, and no matter what you're doing, your eyes and ears are always open. You don't switch off. And it's on the doorstep, so I can get out. And, and even when you think about the sort of pandemic, you know, there I could do an hour's walk easily from my doorstep in fantastic countryside along footpaths that uh, up until then not a lot of people have been using. Um, so get, keeping me healthy, getting out the fresh air, learning about um, um, the nature, the wildlife, the flowers, the birds, the fungi, 
um, so all those sort of things, and then been able to use a sort of a, a, a research skill in, in developing what we know about the area. There's a walking group that I now go to, so there's two of the volunteers are in that walking group, and I've made more friends through, through that walking group as well. Sometimes to get to meetings, because obviously I've got to arrange sitters and I've got to pay for sitters, you know, so it can all get quite costly. The weight of stones when you're dry stone warning. The weather, um, when you're knee deep in snow, um, it becomes a difficulty and also when it's pouring with rain. Mud is a challenge always, um, especially if you go off the paths. Um, you've got to be careful. On a really, really hot day it is a bit tough because the ground's really dry. You've obviously got to be wary about when you're up here and it's quite sparse and quiet, uh, just making sure that you protect yourself, you know, whether it's sun cream, whatever it may be. Um, the only advantage is when it does rain, it saves us a job. We can stay at home. When I'm sort of out litter picking, which, which I do with my wife, uh, there's such a lot of uh, antisocial behaviour, antisocial um, um, stuff left about. Some of the public can be very um, thoughtless. Like we're on the middle of the car park now and you'll find rubbish left within two or three foot of a bin. We've had quite a few fires up here over the years uh, on the moors with tinder dry moorland and people have barbecues up here or just sort of decide to start a fire for no reason whatsoever. This estate is a big estate, 1700 acres and a lot of it is up on the high moor and, and challenges, physical challenges, is one thing. Um, because you've seen some of the stuff we're doing today, putting things in, on site, um, whether it's wooden structures, amending bridges, things like that, we need equipment to do it. A lot of the site is inaccessible, um, except on foot. Litter picking obviously is, you know, helped improve um, things for the people on the estate. The tree planting, of course, um, of which we've done thousands, um, has really transformed the, land, the landscape. Um, the paths have improved enormously. Um, they were just mud paths um, in a lot of the places. Um, there's a group that do um, maintain the sort of the, the, the stream banks um, so that um, the water flows properly. If you go up to Walker Ford Car Park you'll see a lot more kestrels now and that's because there's more voles and mice that are living in these tree these areas where trees have been planted and you know if that's that's a good good sign you know other things are starting to come as well. The path up from the tramway um, whilst it's on an incline is suitable for wheelchairs and push chairs up to a certain um, level up the, up the road. That's opened it up to people who otherwise may not be able to get out on the moor and enjoy it. Seeing a lot of people from Bolton and surrounding areas actually using the facilities, you know, which is what it's here for, and seeing little kids, you know, a lot of little kids come out, children, whatever, you in the river, that sort of thing. You know, a lot of families use the estate. Um, you know, more so than ever, you know, it's good to see all people out and about, yeah. Well, it's got to be kept going, hasn't it? They need to keep trying to get volunteers because it's a huge estate. A lot needs still to do, although a lot has been done. We've got to keep on top of things. Because of where we are and because of the paths, they do tend to wash away with the heavy rain. So that obviously the paths and things are going to need to be maintained. We're going to have to put down more trees, I suppose, uh, especially from where they uh, cut down all the larch down in Walkerfold Woods. All it takes is a couple of months and then it can go back to a bit of disarray. Uh, even basic things like litter picking, being able to keep having volunteers and, and even things like litter pickers, bags, whatever it may be, being able to provide them to allow people to then litter pick. And we want to get people out in the open air. It is a little community. Even though we have our individual groups of volunteers, we're here for the wider you know, you know, uh, vision of Woodland Trust.